Canon are continuing to tease us with information about their new R3 mirrorless camera. They seem to be only drip feeding small bits of information at a time. So this is gonna be a short little video, not a complete look at the specs or anything like that. But we do have these official photos of the camera to look at now and a few more snippets of information on features. But there's some interesting stuff in here. Let's start with the features which we've learned from their press release. They describe the camera as a high-speed, high-performance mirrorless, marking a new era for sports, wildlife, and news photographers. This is definitely a camera that's core focus is on people doing high-end imagery, but quickly. It's a camera for people who are constantly up against the clock, and that's important to keep in mind when you're looking at how it compares to other options out there. Now, autofocus is of course one of the main areas for this camera. They teased a new subject which the AI can identify and track, and we now know that they were talking about cars and motorbikes, which makes perfect sense. Motorsports are a very tricky subject to photograph, and I'm sure any improvement that Canon has made in that area will be very well received. Interestingly for us video creators though, there is a specific mention in this press release that the same object recognition technology is going to be available for both stills and video users, which is a big deal. All too often you get features like this which work amazingly over in the stills modes, but when you flip over to video, they just disappear. And that's not going to be the case here, which means this will be a camera designed for sports, wildlife and news full stop. Video or stills, not just for photographers out there. We also now know a bit more about the video features. And not a, not a huge amount more. We still don't know the sensor's max resolution, which is a very important one. We do know that it will shoot raw video internally, like the 1DX Mark III and the R5 can. We know that Canon Log 3 is an option, which should be a given really, but if it wasn't there, it would have been a big hint that Canon weren't that serious about video in this camera, but it is there, and so that's a big relief to see. And we know that it can do oversampled 4K, and this could be our first proper hint that the maximum resolution might not be as high as the R5, for example. With the R5, they led with the 8K recording announcement, and there's no mention of that here. It's oversampled 4K, but it doesn't say oversampled from what. So that could be the R6 is oversampled 4K, for example, which it takes from 5.1K resolution, as it has a 20.1 megapixel sensor. And the quality is fantastic on that camera. So with the R3, we don't know for certain that there won't be a higher resolution recording mode than the oversampled 4K. The raw recording is almost certainly going to be higher resolution as that's how raw works. But outside of raw, it could just be that the oversampled 4K is the maximum resolution we can record. But I think that's okay. The quality of video out of the R6 is actually pretty fantastic. It's only really the overheating issues which stop that camera being very popular for video work. So if they've solved the overheating issues with the R3, I could see that oversampled 4K option being a very high quality and popular choice for people. So that's about it for the new feature reveals, but we can learn a little bit from the photo of the body design, especially this one of the back. Now there are two main things that I'm really happy to see here. The first is the flip out screen. The 1DX line has always had a solid, flat, attached screen so that it's as secure as possible. And that can be a bit limiting for video work. So I was very curious to see what Canon would do with the R3. I thought they would go for a tilting one, to be honest, but they haven't. They've gone the whole leap and embraced the flip out design, just like on the R5 and the R6. Now everyone has their own personal preference, but a flip out screen is so worthwhile for video work of all kinds. It really helps see the screen better from below, above, and crucially, when you're sitting at the side of the camera. So I, for one, am very pleased to see a flip out screen. And the other thing I want to point out quickly is the AF on button. Now this has that black dot in the middle, which very much looks like their smart controller technology, which we've seen in the 1DX Mark III. And I can't overemphasize how pleased I am to see that here. 
When I used the 1DX Mark III for the first time, I really fell in love with this feature. It's just like using a joystick, but so much faster and more responsive. I much, much prefer it to using the touchscreen to control your autofocus points, and I'm very pleased to see it added to the R3's quite comprehensive list of control options. Because once you add that to the new eye control technology, the flip out touchscreen, eight way joystick, your subject and object recognition modes, Canon really seem to be just throwing the kitchen sink at the ergonomic side of this camera, which for a camera so solidly aimed at that fast paced style of work, where you're just up against the clock all of the time, to me, that's definitely the way to go. So. Not quite all of the juicy little details yet, but definitely a few more interesting pieces of information from today's press release from Canon. So what do you think of the R3 so far? Let me know in the comment section, and of course, keep an eye over at proav.co.uk for any pre-order information when that becomes available. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.